Hello and welcome to The Telescope. Every week we'll bring you a fresh insight from the biggest car market in the world. Today we're on a static preview event of the Xpeng P7 Plus. We're shooting this on September the 13th, almost a month before the actual launch. So if I don't get all the specs right at this point, that's because we're shooting this quite early on. We have reviewed a P7i, the predecessor of this car on Telescope before, but this car has almost nothing to do with the old car. And the biggest highlight is at the rear. I've explained several times before, there is a packaging problem when it comes to full battery electric saloons because you have the battery <coughs> underneath. It eats into the overall vertical space usable for especially the rear cabin. There has been several solutions to try to combat this problem. First is you custom make a very thin battery pack. The previous P7i has a 110 millimeter cell thickness. This pushes even further. This is 109 millimeters pack thickness. Second solution is what's so-called a foot garage. Um, cars like the Porsche Taycan and the Audi e-tron RS and the Lucid Air, they take out battery at this when, where the rear passenger placed their foot to increase the overall vertical cabin space. But that is very expensive. It's out of the question for this mainstream price range battery electric vehicle. You could also fit air suspension to cheat maybe 15 millimeters of the body height. But this P7 Plus offers a new solution a double-decker rear end. The roof line doesn't join with the top of the bonnet at the rear of the car. So now this floats on top. And with the help of this contrasting black roof, this still looks very slippery. But this saloon is actually 1516 millimeters tall. It doesn't look like, it doesn't look that tall, right? This is definitely a new solution, a very unique solution. But is it D solution? I haven't, I, I'm still hesitating. I can see both sides of the argument. People who, who might think this is quite cool, it's quite unique, it's quite tacky. Yes, I can definitely see where they're coming from. But I can also understand why some people think this overcomplicates this rear end. This is an overcomplicated design. Since I've only exposed to this completely brand new approach for less than two hours, I'm still hesitating. I haven't made my mind up yet. Leave your comments down below. The result of this double-decker rear-end approach is a lot of vertical space. There's a term in car packaging. It's called an H61-2. It measures the amount of vertical space you have from the hit point. This car is 973 millimeters for context. Uh, the Xiaomi SU7 we showed you before, a very successful uh, battery extra saloon, that is 944 millimeters, so almost 30 millimeters. Sounds small, but is a huge amount in car packaging. The BMW petrol powered 3 Series, which is a car we can all agree has enough headroom, that car is 961 millimeters, if I remember correctly. So this is 973, but I should point out, this is from the hit point to the glass. And that three series, 961 millimeters is to the roof liner. So with the glass, you can cheat a little bit more, but all things considered, this car has a lot of definitely sufficient amount of headroom. Nobody would be complaining in this car. I'm 5'11 and I'm sitting bolt upright and yeah, I have enough headroom. You have a small table here. You can pull down this central armrest and this seat back also supports 27 degree to 37 degree seat back angle adjustment. So this is a very comfortable rear cabin. Second benefit is this huge tailgate and a absolutely enormous boot. This is one meters in depth and one meters in width and 725 liters in capacity. Also, I've just come up with a new way of thinking about this car. This is a more slippery wagon. This boot, not every wagon has a 725 liter boot. And yeah, this is very practical. And this is a much more slippery design than the wagon. 
has a much lower drag coefficient, which does matter in the battery electric era, especially at highway speed. At this point, we've been told this car has two specs. Both are rear wheel drive. The smaller battery is 60.7 kilowatt hours. That's almost on par with the Tesla Model 3. The bigger battery is 76.3 kilowatt hours. So this car efficiency wise, on the same capacity batteries achieves almost the same amount of range as the Model 3 while offers significantly more space. The front cabin is arguably the most conventional part of this car. It's a horizontal screen, nice materials with gold accent. I'm a sucker for gold accent. I think it really brings up the whole atmosphere in this cabin. But one thing that's slightly unusual, and you can really see how, the, how hard this car is pushing on the aero efficiency front, is look how close this A-pillar is to my head, especially when I try to fold down this visor. The first time when I try to do this, I almost want to lean back. You know, this is that close to my head. A more slippery A-pillar means this car is very aero-focused. But I just haven't felt the visor, the, the sun blinder could be this close to my head anywhere on any car before. This also debuts a new generation of assisted driving system on this car. It takes out LiDAR. Now this car is all vision based and you have this light. Uh, when you engage the assisted driving system, it will illuminate to tell the others uh, this is currently controlled by the XNGP system. This is also the same system that's about to come onto the Mona MO3 Max version. But today it's a static review. We'll verify the effectiveness of this system in the dynamic review. Price-wise, remember, we're shooting this a month before the launch. A really long shot, but I'm going to have a go anyway. I think this should, starting price is around 25,000 euro, 200,000 RMB, there or thereabout. I know this is a very big car, five meter long, three meter wheelbase, but looking at some of the specs, it's on steel springs. It's not on air suspension, and it doesn't have the continuous variable dampers, and it uses all LFP batteries. So cost-wise, this car could be quite competitive. It is quite refreshing to see x to give us this completely new solution, quite a bold one. Do you buy this design? I'm still hesitating. That is all from the telescope today. If you enjoyed this video, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming along very soon.